Will you accept this rose? Dr. Kerry Rose, that is. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the 184th episode of the Inbound Sales Podcast. I'm Wes Schaefer, Sales with for your host, and today we have Dr. Kerry Rose. You are in for a treat. Last week, we had on Jeremy Shapiro. He's a friend of mine, uh, entrepreneur. I've known him through the Infusionsoft community. He started and owns Fuse Desk, which provides uh, help desk and ticketing support for Infusionsoft users. Uh, if you did not hear his story of how he started in college passing out flyers in the dorm rooms uh, and blew up his phones and his poor roommate that uh, didn't even know he was a roommate yet had to take messages, uh, and he leveraged that to build a very successful business, you will want to check out the saleswhisperer.com forward slash session 183 to check out what uh, Jeremy Shapiro was up to. Uh, today we've got Dr. Carrie Rose. Uh, met her online. We hang out with a lot of the same friends and missed each other at Traffic and Conversion Summit in San Diego earlier this year. Uh, she got a PhD in education and she kind of sort of almost in a small way just threw it away. Uh, and got into marketing. So we, we talk about that, how she changed courses, uh, apparently so dramatically, but it wasn't quite as dramatic as it sounds. Uh, she is able to leverage uh, her great uh, training and education, her dissertation, to help entrepreneurs like you uh, build smarter, more intuitive, more effective uh, learning courses. So you really want to want uh, to be taking some notes on that. Another thing you should check out and take some notes is on the five dot us. It's where you get to come out here to Southern California and hang out with me and five other motivated entrepreneurs for two and a half days to focus on your business and growing your sales. Uh, the five dot us. You can learn all about it. See what we're up to put in your application and lock in your seat. And for now, though, lock in your seat belt and let's bring on Dr. Carrie Rose. Dr. Carrie Rose, against my better judgment, I'm bringing on a Gator um, um, Alabama fan. So welcome (laughs) to the sales podcast. Be on your best behavior. You only get one warning, okay? All right. (laughs) All right. All the way from Florida. So welcome. Thanks for uh, taking a little time, uh, Carbon. uh, time out of your busy day to talk with little old sales whisperer. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And just so we're clear, I'm not actually a Bama fan. I just went there. So Ooh. there's a difference. <laughs> nice. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they paid me to get my master's there. So it had nothing to do with being a Bama fan. <laughs> well, all right. Well, the, all right. So, so there's one strike taken away from Yay, you. Yay. Thank I mean, you. Still a Florida Gator. I don't I know. Am. I don't know. Go, go Tigers. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. That's all right. Um, I kept respect. <laughs> So, hey, uh, for those that may not know you, would you mind take a minute or two, kind of give us a thumbnail sketch of who you are and what you do, and we'll dive down the rabbit hole? Sure thing. Um, So basically, I help people create online courses. That's the the smallest, most nutshell version of it. Um, I wrote my dissertation on professional development uh, when I was getting my doctorate, and at the same time, Um, became fascinated with online courses. Um, And so I was studying professional development and then taking as much as I could and and kind of saw where there were areas that could be improved, right, to create like a better relational equity inside of the course. Um, And so I had had a fascination with uh, learning strategies and such. So I put together a process of learning strategies that can be used inside of a formulaic approach to creating online courses so that it maximizes impact, makes sure that the information is um, basically applicable immediately. So that's my my focus now. So I work with solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and uh, companies around the country and beyond um, creating online courses for them. So it's just been really blessed to help in the growth of others and, and help their audiences grow as well. All right. We're going deep down the rabbit hole here now. Okay. This <laughs> is uh, quite amazing. And uh, I've had a couple of membership sites. I'm retooling one of mine right now as we speak. Sure. Uh, and I've helped many others as well. So, so what did you learn in all of this dissertation work? I mean, does it take a PhD to uh, to make a site that actually makes an impact in sales? 
<laughs> I don't think so. Um, I, I think, yeah, no, I think you're good. <laughs> um, what I've really spent the time putting together is something that's formulaic because I wanted to be able to give it to anybody and say, do these things, just do these steps right here. And then you're fine so that nobody else has to do the research that has been done already. Right. So in, inside of them, there, there are strategies that are based on meta-analysis. So like hundreds of research studies to prove effect size or power that the strategy has on learning outcomes. But you don't have to do that and you don't have to understand research or literature like or be able to interpret statistics because it's already done for you (laughs) in order to use it so that's you know that's my process and of course like you know many people have created online courses i think right now it's a it was projected to be a 107 billion dollar industry in 2015 i don't know what the final numbers were on that right that's online learning across the board so but online courses being a part of that for sure for sure so well mm -hmm. i mean that's the revenue i did so i mean what's the rest of the world doing i don't know i just got the numbers off your website oh yeah (laughs) i didn't know that was still public yeah i I take that down people get kind of you know (laughs) shell-shocked and stage fright (laughs) dealing with me um okay Mm -hmm. so what are what are some of these things because you know i it was enlightening to me and it was probably five or six years ago uh, i was having lunch with a lady that i know it's a new york times bestseller and she was um, a bit exasperated, if I may use that word, at um, at how people buy would buy her stuff. But she said, it's not enough for them to buy your stuff. You have to get them to consume it. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of enlightening to me because I, I'll buy a book and I read it. You know, I'll buy a program and I'll apply it. Uh, but most people don't. Most people barely get through, you know, the first chapter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so... And I've seen that as well with my own courses. You know, I want to get people to go through all of the lessons. I want them to learn uh, and get results because that's when they'll sing my praises and refer people to me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so what are what are some things that people are not doing? What are some things they should be doing uh, in their sites uh, to make this uh, relationship right? Would you maximize impact, better relational equity? Ooh. Uh, Mm -hmm. So what are some little things our listeners uh, should be doing right away to make that happen? Sure. I I think a couple of paradigm shifts would help. Um, First of all, people seem to equate uh, time with value. And I think that that needs to be reconstructed or reframed in our minds. Uh, You know, time isn't value. Time is valuable. So making a longer course does not actually equate greater value. I mean, can you think of any time you've been taking a course and gone, I really just want my time back, you know, or gosh, can somebody pay me to take this? (laughs) Because I've thought that before. Um, You know, I sat through a a six hour, I don't know how many hours it was, but it was six hours before I finally stopped taking it course on how to use LinkedIn. And, um, by the time I was done, could I use LinkedIn? Yes, for sure. But what I really wanted was like a PDF version of what was in there because the rest of the information wasn't necessary. So really start thinking about like what it is that they need to know and give them that, give them the value, not necessarily take of their time. Right. So that's like part of it, right? Because you're saying that it needs to be consumed. So the extra stuff is stopping that consumption. Right. Um, I think that, let's see, what was the other paradigm shift I wanted you to have? Oh, yes. Okay. Whoever's taking your course needs to work harder than you did to create it. Okay. Mm. And So and we want sounds- them to work hard? <laughs> is that what you said? We- Yes. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but they're not actually maximizing learning by being a passive learner. Okay. So they're not actually, it's, it's not impacting their lives or their business if they're just staring at the screen and then taking a multiple choice test when it's done. Right. It's like, oh, I, I took a multiple choice test. I can answer the questions and regurgitate the information that you gave me, which actually like to get back into like the research side of things is incredibly low. On, on, on increasing cognitive rigor, like just repeating information is, is nothing. It, it, it requires no, no real thought, right? So you want them to actually apply the material. And when you think about applying material, um, 
you know, think about it in a different way. Like, um, if you've ever taken a branding course, for instance, I was taking one and it was like, they're talking about, oh, you'll need a logo and you'll need a tagline and you'll need to name your business and get the, you know, the domains and you'll need to, and it was just basically like giving steps, but it doesn't really, it didn't really tell me what I needed to think about, you know? And so if, if I think about branding, I'm going to go look at what my competition's doing. I'm going to go do some market research. I'm going to go look at like colors and what they tell people. Um, you see what I'm saying? I'll start comparing and contrasting websites and doing things inherently that are going to make a more successful business, but not everybody does those things inherently. Right. So when you're giving them application, it's not just steps in the process. You have to go give them the ability to think at the level that you want them to play at. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, you know, I want to go back, though, to what you said earlier. And, um, I love the idea that they have to work. Um, mm -hmm. The problem is how do you market that? You know, because it, it's basically <laughs> like, like I tell people it's it's almost like tell them what they want to hear, then give them what they really need mm -hmm. kind of approach. I mean, can you get up there on a stage and say, hey, you know, losers, for lack of a better term, uh, <laughs> Get on your work boots. This uh -huh. is work. There is no easy button. But if you enroll in my course and you do what I say, I can guarantee you success. Uh, but everybody's up there. This is so simple. Just get this. It's so easy. You know, and they're being lied to. But people yeah. continuously <laughs> fork their money over for the lies that they know because they want to avoid the truth. So how can we tell the truth? Hey, this is going to be hard work uh, and still get people to sign up. Okay. Now I am not a copywriter and, and sales isn't my side. So I would say, do what you've been doing. I wouldn't necessarily change that. You know, um, you're going to say, I'm going to give you the processes that people use in order to be effective at X, whatever X is. Right. Okay. So you're saying that like, if you do this, you will be successful. Right. Continue to say that. All right. Are you sure? <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, I, have you seen examples or have you worked with clients where they've, they've just laid it out there? Hey, this is going to be hard work. Uh, I actually have a client that's about to say that to a lot of people. And, and that's his, that's his whole thing is, is you have to do work. You have to hustle. You have to move it. And it's not easy being an entrepreneur. doesn't happen overnight. And, um, right. you know, put your boots on and go for it, you know? Well, you, like you mentioned like a LinkedIn course and, um, I I've taken, um, uh, Lewis house course. I bought it years ago, actually from my assistant, uh, and she was helping with LinkedIn and it was a very good course. He, he's kept it updated. It's only $97. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's in bite size more. So although he has changed it, it was a bunch of like really short videos. Now it's 15 or 16 videos. They all seem to be in about the 40, 45 minute range. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I haven't gone through those, but would he, so, so two questions here, is it better mm -hmm. to have like 10 or 20 longer videos like he has now, or like 50 short videos, uh, mm -hmm. and, and on pricing on either of those, I mean, I, I see the value um, in 97 bucks, no problem. It's definitely worth 97 bucks, but could it arguably be worth a thousand dollars in either of those formats? Mm -hmm. Um, as, as far as his, just to say, I did not take his course. Right. <laughs> so that wasn't the one I was speaking to. Right. Um, there is research that seminars.com conducted. They're an LMS platform. And basically their conclusions were similar to the line of, you know, people have the attention span of goldfish currently. Um, what they found was that about seven minutes in, What'd people start trailing off. Uh, people have uh, the attention span uh, of goldfish. What, what? Oh, are you talking to me? Oh, I'm sorry. I was, oh. I was on another page. Yeah. Oh, goldfish. <laughs> right. You fell so, for it. I got you. Okay. I'm oh, gosh. I walked right into that one. <laughs> uh, oh, I guess I need to go to LSU. All right. Um, so people so... <laughs> have to teach Spanish goldfish. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So um, basically what they concluded is about seven minutes in is where people start trailing off. Okay. So if you can keep videos shorter than that, you're going to have a more likelihood of people consuming the video. Okay. Right. Um, 
So as far as that question, when you're talking about pricing, I think pricing has more to do with your, um, well, yes, what the market will bear, but then also what your funnel is, is set up for. Right. So if he's saying, you know, this is worth $97, right. It may be something where he's trying to give you so much value that the next step in his funnel is something that's more expensive. Right. right. But he still continues along that line of, I'm just giving you this, I'm giving you as much as I can, right. you know? Um, so would that be $97 to another person that's creating the same product? Not necessarily. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point because he, he is a well-known speaker and author, and I think mm-hmm. he's using and, – and really, you know, LinkedIn was his kind of claim to fame. It's how it really got him on the bigger stages. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I think he kept that small uh, in price, has kept it uh, low in price because he does have high-end mastermind. I think he has ten, twenty, you know, $30,000 coaching programs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that kind of brings – you into his sphere of influence for 97 bucks. Uh, right. and then he has other things though that he can upsell you into. So that's, you know, that's a good point. Mm-hmm. Um, on, you know, you mentioned videos with seminars.com. Is it best to deliver the content that way? Or, uh, will people read for seven minutes on a, on a page, you know, on a membership site or, or stick with more multimedia? I would stick with more multimedia for right now. <laughs> um, right. You know, reading for seven minutes, that might be pushing it. Reading for two minutes, that's possible. You know how you can right? tell when I'm reading? How? My lips are moving. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Are you reading now? <laughs> I'm looking at a screen right now. Uh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so keep it video. So what about... Do I need to be the talking head in that video or, or, you know, am I highlighting things? Am I doing a screen share and kind of giving instructions Uh, or can I just be sitting at my desk talking through the content? It really depends on how the rest of the course is is set up. What you're looking at right now is how does that impact um, people that are operating within the visual learning modality? Right. So uh, 25 to 30 percent of people are visual learners and then 15 to 20 percent are, are um, multimodality. So like they might have uh, kinesthetic or auditory as well. So what you want to do is look at if you're looking at your LMS and the pieces that you've uploaded, do you have other images up there? Do you have other text up there? Or is your entire thing just the video? If your entire course is the video and it's just you with the talking head, then you may want to look at throwing up words on the screen, which can be done in post-production or even having different images. Like uh, if you're looking at like a TED Talk kind of situation, you know how they have images pop up on the screen behind the speaker? Sure. Sure. That can be helpful as well. Um, you know, but there's, there's nothing wrong with doing the slides also. It really depends on how all of the pieces fit together so that you're addressing all of the learners. I guess the point is overall, we mm-hmm. need to spend more time and energy and attention on making it a little more entertaining and a little more mm-hmm. aesthetically pleasing because that's just how people learn. Mm-hmm. 100%. Um, what about having uh, like a social media or a, a private Facebook page or group or something um, to help reinforce it? You know, maybe people skim the content, but they're happy being in a group where they can get questions answered right away. Uh, and it's almost like membership um, really just gives you access to the to the private club. Uh, mm-hmm. cause it seems like in a lot of programs that I've helped people with, um, as well, there's a ton of content. I know very few people go through it all, uh, but it mm-hmm. seems almost like they're buying into community versus mm-hmm. buying the how to. I think you're hundred percent correct on that. I love the use of Facebook groups for that purpose, especially if you're doing a timely released program where you can have different people within the groups, like having actual discussions on the content that was just released that week. Do you know what I'm saying? And then they can do like projects together based on what's, you know, what that topic is for the week. Right. But what if you have like a finite course, right? You Mm -hmm. know, here's, uh, uh, you know, seven things to do or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. and it's kind of eternal. Like, like my sales training course, I mean, it's eternal. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I may update it here and there to bring in a new tool, maybe changes to SEO or talk about Snapchat now because that didn't exist a few years ago and people weren't really using it. But all in all, the sales training is timeless. Right. Uh, and so if I have people that are on week one uh, mm-hmm. and others that are completing it, you know, how do you keep everybody in sync or, or is that fine? It, you know, let, let the senior students mentor the junior students. I would think that if you're not doing time release, like you're talking about, then having, you know, group projects or group assignments or group discussions might be, you know, not your use of it. Um, but if you're wanting to have the community anyways, having it still be a place that they can go and like ask each other questions based on, you know, the content that they learned inside your course relating to the business that they're in right now and they're just stumped, maybe that's a place where they can go bounce off of people that have that shared experience of having gone through your course. Right. I mean, would you recommend, cause I know some people they'll do this, they'll do a big launch and, and mm-hmm. launch whatever, two, three, four times a year and create a new group for each launch. And then the people go through that. And then once they graduate or complete that, course, however long it is, you know, one month, two months, whatever, Mm -hmm. then they're funneled into the graduate group, Uh, even though there's no new content, but it's like they got to go through the course to get access to the bigger group. I mean, do you recommend that? I think that depends on what the, the, the next level is like if the next level is keeping within that cohort design, right? If that group that went through is now at the next level and now they're receiving different information or they have the access to receive different information, then keeping them together is probably a good idea. Okay. Very interesting. So what am I missing here? And what little nuggets have you not given us? I know there's (laughs) little pearls of wisdom you're holding on to. Well, sure. I think, you know, part of what we what we previously discussed about Lewis House LinkedIn program, um, when you're saying like he's practically giving it away for $97, right? Um, part of that is a, is a mindset of making sure you're giving away your best material. And not to say that that's his best, but not right. being afraid to give it away, you know? Right. Um, not being afraid to give away whatever your knowledge is for free. Because honestly, people don't know what else you know. <laughs> You well, know. they do with me. I mean, cause I'm done. I, <laughs> this is going to be like episode 185 or so. And I was done on like number two, but I mean, I keep you talking again. and people keep listening. So I, I don't know. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always do tell people, give away your best stuff for free up front. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I usually get a little bit of pushback. And then when people do it, they're like, oh, wow, that really worked. Yeah. Mm-hmm. hundred uh, percent. But obviously you've got to have something behind it, right? I mean, Lewis has more expensive things. He he probably couldn't feed his family, uh, although I think he's still single. So he couldn't feed himself. He's a big guy. So he probably couldn't (laughs) feed himself on just $97 LinkedIn programs because, you know, in a way that's kind of run its course. I mean, there's still LinkedIn programs out there, but he didn't want to be known as just a LinkedIn guy forever. Mm -hmm. Um, So you got to have something bigger to fulfill on, right? Um, Because you really got to treat that as your lead magnet, unless it's something that, that, is eternal or evergreen and you can sell that $97 thing all the time, all day, every day, forever. Mm-hmm. Right. right. It's just one step. Yeah. So you got to have some, a little bit, a little bit bigger, mo, mo better. Um, I, I think that what you're saying also touches on something that I haven't shared with you yet. It's, it's more of a personal perspective than anything else, but I believe that your course should be authentic to you or to your business. Right. Um, just to give you a little story, it was kind of funny. So if ever if ever I friend somebody or someone friends me on Facebook, I always say, hi, nice to meet you. Because I, I figure if they're going to have access to pictures of my children, I want to feel their vibe and know who they are, right? Right. Um, so this guy friended me and I said, you know, hi, nice to meet you. And he said, hey, do you want to do a course together? And I'm going, what does this guy know what I do already, you know? And I was like, all right, what do you have in mind? And he was like, oh, well, we can create a course and then we can split the Facebook ad spend. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, I understand conceptually what you're talking about. What do you, what do you want to make a course on? You know? And he's like, well, I don't know. We can make it on anything. I was like, well, tell me about your brand. Like, who are you? What do you do? And he's like, oh, well, I'm a, um, a nutritionist. And I said, okay, great. I help people create online courses. And he's like, great. We could do a course together. And I'm like going, this isn't like, this isn't the same target demographic. Right. 
you know, and he would do a course on pretty much anything. And I think that where people miss the mark on that is that they're not realizing that like, kind of like what you're saying, the money's on the other side of it. Right. Right. I mean, there's some money in the course, but some of that money gets kicked back into ad spend and continuing to fill the funnel. But the money is on the other side of the courses. So you want to make sure that you're creating something or creating a funnel that really works for, for you and for where you want to go and for what you want to speak about, not just doing a course with the conception of you will make money from creating a course. Right. Well, and that's what I tell people all along is that you can get into sales to make money. But if, it's, if your only goal is to make money, um, even if you make a lot in a short term, uh, you'll always be scrambling. And with mm-hmm. social media the way it is now and Internet, smartphones, and et cetera, I mean, you will burn bridges. Uh, mm-hmm. And you will become persona non grata on the Internet um, sooner rather than later. And it will become very tough to make any money uh, regardless of how good you are. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you're not staying true to who you are and if you are in it just for the money, um, I mean, people can tell, mm-hmm. you know, they can, and there's actually some data to support what you're saying there. Like 70% of business is repeat business. And then only 5% of people that are dissatisfied actually complain. So that's a huge one. And 80% of businesses think that they are doing right by their customers, but only 8% of the customers actually think so. Whoa. Yeah. So put all that together and see how that applies in your online business compared to just like, you know, small businesses, but look at it for, for your own. Like, do you really know what people are saying? I think that's a good, you know, really good question there. Are you creating the best work that stands in line with your values and your principles and what you're really wanting to give people? So can you tell me those numbers again? 70%. I can say them five times fast. Um, ah, <laughs> so 70%. 8%, 8% think you're doing right, but 80% of businesses think they are. But you said 70%? You were talking about repeat business? Yeah, 70% of business is repeat business from your existing customers. Nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you really need to you know, give them the best quality and, and make sure that it's, you know, now what how, they need. How <laughs> is that? If only 8% of the customers think you're doing right by them, how they, they still come by from you again? <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Not necessarily. No. So 80% of businesses think that they're doing right, but only 8% of their customers think they are. Mm-hmm. Right. But then if 70% of businesses repeat business, Right. Where's that coming from? I mean, if 92% of your customers don't think you're doing right by them. Right. So they're going back to the 8% that they're. <laughs> so that 8% that percent accounts for that much. Uh, in, it's, it's, basically, it sounds kind of like the 80-20 rule. I mean, mm-hmm. 80% of your profit's coming from 20% of your customers. Right. And then, oh gosh, what is it? I heard like some stat and I don't have it memorized, but it was something like Chuck E. Cheese doesn't get repeat business. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all one time and then you're out. I don't know. I think my kids have made up for that, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that's probably right. Even though I got seven kids and um, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember last time we held a party at Chuck E. Cheese for any of them. So, I've never uh, gone. yeah, never. <laughs> uh, even when parents and I can't remember last time I've even been to a Chuck E. Cheese party, even when they offer free beer, mm-hmm. uh, and that's pretty dang bad. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna have to look that up because that's probably right. Yeah, check that out. Let me know. Hit me, <laughs> hit me up. Send me a message and uh, let me know if that one's right. <laughs> all right, I will. Uh, all right. So, uh, final words, parting words of wisdom. I always, uh, I like to ask my, uh, my guests, you know, imagine your, uh, listener right now, uh, they're somewhere where they can't write anything down. They're on a the treadmill, they're on a run, they're on an airplane. I mean, what do you want them to, what should they do? What do you want them to do when they can do, uh, based on what they've learned in this episode? Uh, what should they go implement, uh, to, benefit from your instructions, your recommendations on this uh, episode? Sure. Well, I think we talked a lot about, you know, looking at your authentic self um, and determining a funnel, right? I mean, we didn't really go into steps for that, but I think that that's the most important thing, your authentic self, your funnel, and then doing market research to see if you have a course that the market will bear. I mean, you start with that and then create the best course that you possibly can because it's just one piece of the puzzle that you're going to make money from. It's not the end. Gotcha. Well, I've been wanting to do a course on how to get your two-year-old to open your beer bottle 
uh, without creating ex- excess foam. You think there's a market for that? Um, sh- I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying for you. I'm just like, I think it would be the funniest YouTube video series out there, but you might get into trouble for it. It's <laughs> only if they drink it. Or... If they just bring it to me, I don't, I'm going to make, I'm going to prove you wrong, Gator. Okay. okay? I'm going to prove now, you wrong. Now, is this a can or a bottle? Oh, either one, you know. Just... I think. I think you've got safety issues with the bottle, but with the can, you know, um, well, it's just a matter of whether this video sh- would sell. I'm going to show them how to do it without cutting, <laughs> getting cut, dropping it, spilling. <laughs> I think there's sure. a need. I think there's a need. Just don't be held liable for anything that they uh, go through while trying to implement the practices. Oh, a little legal <laughs> advice. I see where you're coming from. All yeah. right. So doc- <laughs> Dr. Carrie Rose.com, right? That's your website. Yes. And uh, find you on Twitter by the same name, and it's Carrie C A R R I E, uh, Doctor Carrie Rose. And then you are, are also launching a new venture, right? Brandlegend dot us. Yes. yes, I'm a partner in a digital branding agency. Very nice. All right. Well, we will have links to all of that um, as well in the show notes. So um, all the way from Florida, thanks for uh, joining us on the Sales Podcast. It's been great having you. Thank you so much. I've appreciated it. All right. Have a great day. You too. Good stuff. Um, I love some of the numbers she was talking about. Online learning is a $107 billion industry. You know, I just interviewed Micah Mitchell today, and his episode uh, will go live on session 188 at the end of the month. But he works on membership sites, a company called Membirium, and that integrates with Infusionsoft. Uh, he's also expanding into active campaign, but we talked about making video content, making premium content, uh, and putting behind a wall, right? A, some type of secure portal that people have to log into. Even if you give it away for free, they have to register to access it. So it's a way to build a list. But you know, what Dr. Rose, Carrie Rose is talking about, uh, is related to that, you know, this online learning, having the information accessible, multimedia, multi-format, uh, so people can learn because it's hot and it's growing. Uh, I know I have done a good bit with this, and I'm about to stroke a big check uh, as I expand uh, the Make Every Sale program, uh, all online, all e-learning. Uh, it's a way to scale. And it applies to any business. You could be in the healthcare profession and provide free content or even paid content, but certainly free content on how to rehab after a surgery, you know, or physical therapy, uh, how to take care of a wound, you know, after an injury or or surgery. Uh, So there's uh, attorneys could have frequently asked questions or forms that need to be downloaded, how to prepare for a case. Uh, It really just runs the gamut. But the nice thing is, uh, you know, when you're onboarding new staff, especially, you could have uh, online learning. You could have material processes, you know, tell your story uh, that helps people really understand who you are uh, and the culture around your business. So you need to take a look at this uh, and do more than take a look. You need to look into how you can apply this to your business. And you know what? A lot of times it's not readily apparent. So find somebody like me. Reach out to Dr. Kerry Rose. Find somebody that can give you some insight. I'm doing the same thing right now, working with some guys in Vegas. They can see me better than I can see me. You know, it's the old adage, you can't read the label from inside the bottle. So by getting help from others, you get a neutral third-party professional opinion on what it will take to help you get to the next level, you know, just like when you go to a physical trainer, uh, just like when you go to a golf coach, I mean, whatever, to help see the flaws, see your blank spots, you know, your blind spots you're not seeing uh, so you can grow, right? So you can fill those in and um, improve those areas. Uh, So like I always say, go back and listen to this multiple times, take notes, uh, apply what you learned, and uh, but be sure to follow Dr. Kerry Rose and, um, Look at what you can do to add online learning to your offerings, okay? If you need some help and make that happen, as I mentioned at the top of the show, check out the5.us. You can come out, hang out with us, and uh, get some focused help, two and a half days. Once you get here, all of your expenses are covered. Come on out, hang out with five other motivated entrepreneurs to grow your business. As always, thanks for listening. Uh, Be sure to share this, tweet it out, leave a five-star review on 
iTunes, and remember to sell different.